In this video, I will talk about how this course is organized and how it will be graded. First, I would like to review the types of content that I'm going to provide. There will be input, which are videos in which I'm, as the lecturer, providing an overview of a certain topic. It's really just an overview. You expect it to read beyond that, to use the books that I'm going to show you, to use online material to go more in depth. In depth. Then there will be exercises in which I, as the lecturer, will show you how to implement certain content in Python using IPython Notebook. And this is really me providing content to you. Then there are the applications for which the content of the input and the exercises have to be combined and extended where you will learn to implement something that really goes beyond what I showed you. And there will be individual or group deliverables for which you have to record yourself or your screen if it's a presentation or where you have to write a report. And I'm going to show you that in more detail in the following. There's also going to be question and answer sessions for which I will collect your questions and make videos in which I provide answers. And there will be a video conference where we as a group will video chat with a well-known machine learning expert about data science and machine learning, where you can actually ask your own questions to her to understand what it is, what it's like to work in the industry as a machine learning expert. Let's consider the schedule. So we start with an introduction to data science. Uh, of course, the course organization that you're watching right now and the introduction to Python. And then in this week, I want you to upload a video in which you introduce yourself. This will be an individual deliverable. So you have to do that on your own. So I get to know you and kind of get a feeling on who you are and why you're taking this course. And the next week, there will be an introduction to scientific computing and an overview of basic statistics. So this is really getting up to speed and everybody on the same level. And then in the third week, we start with a lecture on classification. And there we will have input from me, where I provide an overview. And there will be an exercise where we together will apply and train our own classification model. And then you will have to apply this and go beyond what I gave as input. We will also have a session focused on regression, one on clustering and dimensionality reduction. As you can see, the regression and the clustering and dimensionality reduction, they will have exercises in which you are expected to work on something, to try something out. But for the classification one, you actually have to hand something in to get the credit in this course. I'm going to explain that in the next session section. Yeah, then there will be a video on my expectations of the course project, what is expected from the course project, and there will be some input on fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics in machine learning. And you as a group will have to hand in an assignment, a written assignment, on fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics in machine learning. You can see the deadline there. There will be some input in natural language processing and topic modeling. And then there will be the first question and answer session. Also in the seventh week, you will have to hand in your expose presentation where you give me a first overview on what you're trying to do in your very own project. And this is not graded. This is just a chance for you to get feedback, to be creative and to do to start your own machine learning project, to have some real data science uh, experience, to get some real data science experience. After that, there will be a session on so-called exploratory data analysis, both as an input and as an exercise, which you can follow along. Then there will be a session on computer vision and one on evaluation metrics. In week 10, we will then have the second questions and answer session based on all the questions that you had while following along the inputs and exercise and applications. But that's also the week in which 
I expect the second presentation of your project. I call this the progress presentation. So the goal is for you to give me a quick update on how far you've come, on what are the challenges, what are the problems, and I will give you feedback that hopefully will improve the project and will help you to make it even more successful. Then there will be a video conference with a machine learning expert, uh, and the expert is going to be Karen Ulrich, who is a PhD student and doctoral researcher at the University of Amsterdam and who was previously at Microsoft Research and Google DeepMind. And the idea here is that you can ask her on all things related to data science, to machine learning, and uh, yeah, to actually get some input from people who are really deep in the field. And then in the final week, you will have to upload your final presentation and your final report. And what that will entail, I will explain to you in the next sections. First, Consider the grading criteria. We will have this self introduction video, and that's required. The deadline for that is the 27th of April, um, one minute to midnight. Then the classification notebook, again, that's required. You have to do it, you have to upload it by the 25th of May, again, till one minute to midnight. Then you will have your report on fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics in machine learning. The deadline for that will be the 22nd of June, and this will be 20% of your grade. Then there's going to be the expose presentation. The deadline for that is the 15th of June. The progress presentation, two weeks later, deadline 29th of June, and the final presentation. The final presentation is due on the 13th of July and will account for 30% of your final grade. The final report is due a week later on the 20th of July and will account for 50% of your grade. And now I highlight the ones that make up your grade. So 20% is going to be the report on fairness, accountability, transparency, and ethics. And 30% the final presentation, 50% the final report. The other things are required. That means if you don't hand them in, you won't get any credit, but it won't be graded. And the idea behind that is to kind of not make you worry too much about the grade when you do the classification notebook, when you do the first brainstorming about your project and while you work on your project. Right, so we grade at the end, with exception of the report on uh, fate ml and um, yeah and that's how the grading looks like let's think about the credit points so you will get six credit points which approximately equals to 180 hours of work for an average student whatever that is but the idea that i had behind this is the following allocation of time for let's say an average student so i think Approximately 24 hours will be spent on the lectures, which kind of means that you will have to revisit them because I think you many of the things you won't get from the first watch. So I allocate a lot more time than I will put on material, both because I think you're going to have to rewatch some things again and again until you understand them, and also because I expect you to look up some things that you don't understand from the videos yourself because I can only do so much in these videos. 20% will be spent on the tutorials, that is the, the exercises on you actually doing things and I think that's really where the learning is taking place so that's why I put a strong focus on this. I also allocated six hours on you learning Python because that's very important to me. Um, then we have the time for the fairness, accountability, transparency and ethics exercise the report you're going to write then the work on your expose and the expose presentation the progress presentation the final presentation and as you can see a lot of time dedicated to the final report and the final project as a whole what's really important to me here is that this is not like other machine learning classes the goal is not just to learn about basic machine learning concepts but 
It's really to enable you to apply machine learning to real world problems and to make a difference. To really do something with these techniques. There are probably better machine learning classes, more thorough machine learning classes with a lot more theory. Uh, and I highly encourage you to take them. But the concept here is really to apply it, to be creative, to do something with it and uh, to learn how to make change in the real world. And the idea behind that uh, is the so-called Forschendes Lernen in Deutsch. Uh, so research-based learning. So the learning is really by doing. So I'm not just transmitting information and you're receiving the information and then you have it, but you have to do it, you have to apply it, and only then and only by that you can actually learn. Uh, and I put a very strong focus on that. It's the first time I'm doing it in an online course, but I hope you like this and this works out. I also organized the course as a group project, and I will explain a bit why I think that's very good to work with more than one person. So the idea is that you as a group of three people will work on a project throughout the course. And for this project, you will pick a data set, formulate a research question or multiple research questions, and then pick suitable methods to answer these research questions. And you're going to do that by finding the best model for your data set question and method. And you can see the best has a star because best will be very circumstantial you're going to have to argue why the model you build is the best, um, but we're going to learn how to do that. And then you're going to write a report on your findings and which you can motivate your choices and explain to me and the world why you did the project the way you did the project. I like the idea of having this in a group of three because I think not everybody is an expert in all the things. And to visualize this and to kind of help you a bit, uh, I like to use this so-called data science profile from the book Doing Data Science. And what you see here is that you have data visualization, machine learning, mathematics, statistics, computer science, communication, and domain expertise. And you can basically make an assessment how much of an expert you are in these projects. And the idea would be, for instance, this is one, one thing I did for myself, right? I'm quite, quite good at computer science and machine learning, not really an expert in mathematics or statistics, and I know a thing or two about data visualization. Um, and the idea is to have a group and as a group to get above a certain threshold to be productive. So you might have somebody who's really good at uh, a certain domain or who's really good at writing or has a strong background in mathematics and you might be somebody who's really good in statistics and I want you to find other people who complement you, who you can learn with, who can learn with and from um, to actually make a project that applies machine learning to a real world project problem. And what I would like you to do uh, is to really take this uh, template and to think about where am I? What am I good at? What am I not so good at? And to really sketch out, okay, this is my focus. This is where I'm good at. This is where I'm not so good at. And then you have the self-assessment and to also make a goal. What do I want to achieve in this semester? What do I want to achieve during my studies? Where do I want to really become an expert? What are the areas where I really want to focus on? And these you can then also use to find the right people for your project and to, to have a project that really goes all the way and yeah, that uh, covers all the different uh, domains that are important to data science. We have a course book. That's the book that this course is based on. And you can get it for free as an ebook through the Staats- und Universitätsbibliothek Bremen. It's called Introduction to Machine Learning with Python. And it's written by Andreas Christian Müller and Sarah Guido. And this is interesting in so far that 
especially Andreas Müller, is very, very active as a developer for scikit-learn. So you get insights really from the experts who wrote the library on how to apply it to Python, to use it for Python. So this is the main book, again, from the creator of scikit-learn, very practical introduction to Python machine learning. If you only want to read or buy one book, that's the one I highly recommend. I also like the one on the left, it's called Doing Data Science, it was one of the first books on data science, written by Kathy O'Neill and Rachel Shutt. Shutt was a data scientist with Google, and Kathy O'Neill is a, a writer and, and scientist who also wrote the book Weapons of Math Destruction. So she's also a very important voice in the critical computing community. Another book I can highly recommend is called Building Machine Learning Systems with Python by Louis Pedro Coelho and Willy Richard. And that's another very practical book, but on more advanced topics than what the Miller and Guido book is covering. One other book or two other books that I highly recommend uh, if you want to go really into depth, deep de depth with machine learning is the book Deep Learning by Ian Goodfellow, Joshua Benjo and Aaron Kuvil. Um, that's a very, very good introduction to deep learning and neural networks if you want to learn about them in detail. Another book that I can highly recommend is called Twitter and Tear Gas. The Power and Fragility of Network Protest by Zeynep Tufeki. Um, another very good book, and this is more on the, the critical perspective on how these techniques can help uh, yeah, protest and how, how they can help uh, and change the world and society at large. In the following, I will give you a brief overview of what I expect in the expose presentation. Again, Remember this and maybe revisit it when you're preparing your expose presentation. The idea is to give me a five minute overview um, about what your project entails. And what I want for that is that it has at least a title, an abstract, an introduction, some background that's related work, and a description of the method and the data collection. So the title should clearly describe you, your project. The abstract should summarize your approach and your anticipated findings in short. The introduction should introduce somebody new to the topic, to what you did and why it's worth doing. The background should name all the tools and approaches you will use, ideally also other peer-reviewed publications that use a similar approach. And the method will this should describe what will you build, what's the machine learning model that you're trying to build, what's the data, how will you get the data, and uh, how it all fits together. And then I will use that to give you honest and actionable feedback on how to improve the system and to make your project even better. The project report, the final project report, is supposed to be five to seven pages using the ACM template. The ACM is the Association for Computing Machinery. I will show you the template and the link in the next slide. But first, let's consider what the project report should entail. It's the same things like the expose, probably in uh, updated form. But you have to describe your title, give a short summary, give us an introduction, situate yourself in the background, and then show us your results, right? What are the answers to your research questions? What are the highlights and lowlights of your approach? What sounded good but didn't work? What uh, surprised you? What interesting things did you observe? And yeah, what didn't work and why do you think it didn't work? It's all about learning. So be honest, don't oversell bad results. If you have negative results, just write them up well and you'll be fine. So don't be too afraid, but uh, please be honest. That's the most important thing here. Academic integrity, you, uh, and yeah, just describe what you did and what worked and what didn't work. And then in the conclusion, give us a quick summary of your work in one or two paragraphs. And in a way, that's also the idea 
of the project presentation. Again, it's closely linked to the project report and uh, should give us an overview on the high and low lights. This is the grading scheme that I'm going to use. As you can see, there's quite a broad range of um, assessment uh, criteria. I will look at for the presentation how clear the slides are, how clear the delivery are, how good the timing is, right? You have 10 minutes for the final presentation. Um, is the time well allocated? I, I don't want to see presentations that are 80% or 8 minutes of, of background and then only 2 minutes of results. So have a nice distribution there. It should be clear what the topic is. It should be clear what the focus is. I will grade how well you know the content, how well you know machine learning, how well you know your data, and also how critically you analyzed it, how good the analysis is. I will look at your conclusions. Questions and answers won't be a problem here, but normally I also grade how well people respond and Question uh, to uh, to questions and uh, how good their answers are, and of course I will also uh, grade the overall performance. Here's the project report template. I asked you to use the ACM master article template. You have a LaTeX version and also um, a Word version, but I think that LaTeX is highly encouraged. But that's open to you. But you have to use the template. That's a strict requirement for the report to be graded. This might be the first time that you actually asked to write a research paper. Unfortunately, I can't cover how to write a research paper, but there is a lot of really good material also with our Staats- and Universitätsbibliothek. As a starting point, I can highly recommend this paper called Portal of Research Methods and Methodologies for Research Projects and Degree Projects from Anna Hockonson from uh, KTH in Schistach.